Hey, I'm Mary, and I'm going to talk about the background information of Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated. So 1902 is when it started, and J.B. Harrison began selling the Coca-Cola in glass bottles in Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, and then in 1916, the unique contour bottle was approved. 1920, the name Coke was made official by the Supreme Court. And in the 1980s, uh, the new Coca-Cola flavors were in introduced, Cherry Coke, Diet Coke, and then in 1997, the CEO position was passed down to J.B. Harrison's great-grandson, and 2002 marked 100 years of the Coca-Cola bottling company consolidated, and the company in 2010 was named the largest independent Coca-Cola bottler in the nation. Okay, so Coca-Cola bottling company has really differentiated itself in its core mission and its values. So in its mission statement on its website, uh, the company says their mission is to honor God, serve others, pursue excellence, and grow profitability. Um, they really pride themselves in being the largest independent um, bottler of, of the Coke bottling system. And they also do a lot of community involvement and innovation as well. So they not only distribute and make Coke products, but they also partner with um, over 300 brands in making and bottling those products across the Southeast as well. So the company has a few different driving forces, the first being consumer trend changes, and there's been a huge decline in the soft drink industry, which has really hurt the company just because this is what they mainly focus in. And then innovation and technology, they really use this as a way to modernize their website in order to help customers make payments and also order products online. And then they also continue to just innovate the products and also the distribution processes and services just to keep the customers and differentiate itself from other bottling companies in the industry. And then sales and distribution methods, they continue to grow its sales force and distribution network capability and keep its costs to operate low. And then the consumer demand, they really use this in a way um, to just utilize how they make their bottles and then also how they distribute their be beverages because all of that is based on how much the customers demand initially, and so keeping switching costs high, that way it's harder for customers to switch to other companies. So some of their key success factors um, include that they're very customer service oriented, so their focus is on the customer's needs and wants, and they build that relationships, um, and not so much on their products. Coca-Cola has a very high brand name, and um, they're known all over the world, so obviously that it gives them credibility as, very highly established as well, and it allows them to define their standards for their competitors. Um, also, their supplier relationships. So, it's important that they build these efficient supply chains and with multiple suppliers. So, they need to develop the relationships with the suppliers so that their business is dependent on the Coca Cola bottling company. And then, continued growth. So, obviously, Coca Cola is a large company, so they're able to expand and they have the means to do so. All right, so next we'll talk about the SWOT analysis for Coca-Cola Bottle & Co. Consolidated. The first strength would be corporate social responsibility. So the company works a lot in local programs for each of the areas that they send their products to. For example, the YMCA, local schools, and even the World Wildlife Fund in Nashville. They also have a very large reach. So all along the eastern and southeastern part of the United States is where this company will send all of their products. And so that's a huge um, segment of the population. Most Americans live on the eastern and southeastern sector of the United States anyway. So that's a lot of customers that they're reaching. They also have great sustainability. So there are tons of practices that they utilize. 100% of the packaging materials are recyclable and they also reuse wastewater for other production needs. There's also great brand recognition. Everyone has heard of Coca-Cola in the United States and outside of the United States. And so even though a lot of people have not heard of Coca-Cola Bottle & Co. Consolidated, they have that Coca-Cola name to back them up and still have a great reputation that precedes them. They're also very financially able, so they have the money and the resources to go out and go into the community to do helpful projects. And so not a lot of companies would be able to do that if they didn't have those resources. 
All right, so there are some weaknesses to the company as well. And so the first being they're not very well known. So a lot of people have heard of Coca-Cola in the sense of Coke and Sprite and just the drinks and like the museum in Atlanta. But as far as the bottling company, not many people know about its operations, where it's located, or even what they do. And so that could be a weakness if they were to educate the public about the bottling company, that could be a huge benefit. They also have high supplier bargaining power. So since they can't produce their own sugar or other materials to create drinks, they rely on other suppliers for those materials. And so that could potentially be an issue if these suppliers decide to get money greedy and um, you definitely don't want to go back and forth with suppliers because that could be a long process, really long battle. Um, they also have a lot of pollution and environmental concerns. So tractor trailers are the most efficient way to take materials across the country and across state lines. However, those vehicles use a lot of gasoline and that puts a lot of carbon emissions into the air. And so that's not very environmentally friendly. They also have high employee turnover rates. And so a lot of the positions at base level in the plant are, um, they don't have many requirements, like you don't need to have a bachelor's degree or anything to that extent. And so a lot of employees may come in just to get a job, work there for a few weeks and then leave. And so you definitely don't want that. You definitely want to have high employee training. Um, there's also no differentiation from other bottling companies. I feel like y'all are about the same level as PepsiCo bottling company. No one really has that defining factor. And so that's a great way to stand out from competition. There are many opportunities for the company to take advantage of, the first being a marketing campaign. So it would be a great idea for the company to create a small animated video, and that way they can show consumers how the idea goes from headquarters and goes through the bottling plant, and then ends up in consumers' homes. Next, innovative labeling. So everyone has seen the traditional red label. However, the labels can be modified, and so to have a label that's unique to a certain region, um, that the company produces mass-wide, that would be very helpful and get a lot of recognition. Also, increase in local community involvement. So you could get involved in a lot of different ways. Um, one could be a school competition, which we'll talk about later in recommendations. And then also experiment with different raw materials. So everyone's heard of the glass bottles, the plastic bottles, the sugar. And so if you were to change that and experiment with different plants or different um, bottling materials, heck, maybe even cork for a bottle. That could be a great way to just see what consumers like and great ways to improve. Next, environment, environmentally friendly transportation. So like I mentioned in weaknesses, tractor trailers do produce a lot of carbon emissions. And so if you were to look into electric vehicles, even drones for transportation, that could take you to the next level. There are many threats that could impact the company. The first being the decline in the soft drink trend. So while it's great that a lot of people are becoming more health conscious, switching from soft drinks to water, it could impact the companies that work daily with these drinks. Also, union strikes. There was a union strike in Alabama and Mississippi at some of the plants, and they were just complaining about unfair labor practices. And so while that was only in that specific area, it definitely is negative PR. You don't want that hanging in the back of your mind when you think of Coca-Cola bottling co. Also natural disasters. Like I mentioned earlier, tractor trailers are a great way to transport products. However, anything could impact and slow that. Everything from tornadoes, earthquakes, hurricanes, even a wreck on the side of the road could impact the travel of these products to customers. Other um, influencers are raw materials. Like I mentioned earlier, they use a lot of other suppliers and so that could be a threat if they decide to get money hungry. And lastly, competition. So if more consumers decide to switch to Pepsi or Snapple or Dr. Pepper, any of those bigger drink companies, um, that could definitely impact the market share of this company, therefore reducing the amount of products that need to be produced in the plant, and that could potentially lead to employee layoffs. So next we're gonna talk about the analysis of financials. And in this graph right here, you can see that it's the company's revenue. And so from 2013 to 2017, it gradually grew, which is good for the company as a whole. And then over here, you can see that every aspect of the company has kind of gotten better um, and kind of decreased a little bit. And so for ROA, it started at 39.63, and then it had 
a big drop in 2015 to 28.39%, and then a big increase in 2016, and then it went back down in 2017, back to 29.88%. And then the ROE, um, return of equity, started at 5.96%, and then it kind of did the same thing where it dropped in 2015 and then went back up in 2016, and then went back down. And then the gross profit margin started at 40.1%, and then it kind of started just to kind of go down um, to 2017 where it was 35.6%. And then the operating profit margin started at 4.49%, and then it also gradually went down um, to 2017 where it was 2.22%. And then and lastly, the net profit margin started at 2%. Um, and then it kind of stayed constant and then in 2017 went to 2.4%. So next is strategic concerns. So the bottling company is not very well known. Um, just like Allison said earlier in SWOT analysis, how Coke is kind of seen as like a huge product and how they have all their products, but they don't really see like the behind the scenes bottling company of it. And then there was also a huge decline in the soft drink sales. Um, and this is just basically due to the health trends that are like going along right now. And then there's high competition with PepsiCo and just other um, bottling companies also as well, but just because it's really easy for them to just switch over to Pepsi, which kind of goes into the buyer power, um, just because it's so low that they're able to just switch over there super fast if they need to. And then also lack in marketing and connection with Coke, um, kind of like I stated earlier, just how some people just don't really know that there's a bottling company behind Coke, and so it would be really good for them to just incorporate the marketing into that. So the first recommendation that we have for the company is just to create a unique and limited edition of glass bottles that are inspired by the state. Um, so this will instill pride among customers and generate knowledge of the Bottling Co. And then it will begin a limited edition and limited time campaign um, that will continue if popular. And so that will kind of continue into like more states and stuff. And then if successful, the campaign will grow into encourage customers and begin collecting bottles um, from each state and also maybe into the plastic bottles as well. And then examples of these are just like peaches for and Coca-Cola for Georgia and then also guitars and Rolling Hills for Tennessee and then national Mon monuments and American flags for Washington DC. Okay, so for our second recommendation, uh, we want to create a marketing campaign. Um, kind of explaining Coca-Cola Bottling Company is and what they do. So we talked about um, a lot of people just not really knowing that Coca-Cola has its own bottling company and that's a completely separate entity. And um, so they don't know how the products are made, how they're bottled, or how they're distributed. So we want to create like an animated short kind of representing the journey from the making of the beverage through the bottling process um, at the bottling facility and then being sent out. So at the end of the commercial, um, the product will, will can be shown uh, being bought and then taken home and the Coca-Cola bottling company logo um, can pop up on the screen and the commercial will be aired nationally. Our last recommendation would be to create a competition among local schools in each of the states that are serviced. And so the way that the competition would work, each school would have a pickup area so they would donate all of the glass materials that they have, all the plastic materials that they have. Students, faculty, staff, even people in the community that students want to rally to donate can come drop off those products that will later be recycled and used in Coke bottling products. And so the winner would be determined by weight. There would be one winner per state, so one school per state that would win. And so in return for the efforts, the prize would be a $10,000 grant to go towards any need. So if they want to buy iPads for students, new computers, uniforms, textbooks, really anything that the school needs, that's what that grant would go towards. Um, in addition, each student, faculty member, and staff member would receive a t-shirt and a free Coke. And so this would definitely spread the knowledge of the company and just really in, um, inspire like an area for environmentally friendly activities.